<laughs> nice. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm worth staying up late for. But uh, all right, hey everybody, welcome to uh, photography uh, photo photo sharing discussion number thirty five here in Mark's Photography Spot. Um, got Frank in uh, beautiful uh, sunny uh, Northern California with us. Hey Frank, how's it going? Hi, doing well, thank you. Good, good. Um, We'll see if we get uh, Tim from uh, from Mary Old England to join us. I don't know. I didn't see ever. I, I didn't see a reply. But um, I know John in Denmark was going to join us, but uh, he uh, was uh, sent me sent a message uh, saying he was going to bed early because he did a lot of work today. So I can't blame him since it's you know, I could say at two in the morning uh, over in Europe. So uh, if anybody else joins, great. Um, any questions, you guys out there that don't want to join in but just want to ask questions? I think I've got the Q&A feature um, enabled. So, um, and if nobody joins in, it'll be on the uh, YouTube, and I'll post the, post this to the blog along with any of the uh, photography links that uh, we share. Uh, so we've got a few uh, few images posted to the group. And I'll talk about that. Um, I don't know if you've got some um, some more. I know you mentioned last week, Frank, that you have a whole bunch of photography links to share. So if there's a couple more that maybe you think might be worthwhile to share, that'd be great. Um, sure. And then the other thing I'd like to um, talk about. I don't know. You, you well, you use Nick, right, Frank? So you've um, have you tried the the new uh, Analog Effects Pro, the new free upgrade thing? I, I briefly went in there and kind of tweaked with a few things, um, but that's about it. I just okay. kind of a yeah, shallow look at it. Yeah, that's about that's about all I've done at this point. So I talk a little bit about that, but um, I went to and I posted an image. I think to the Flickr group, we went up to um, an old mill up in um, up in the area here last weekend. And I posted the digital image that I did, and I also took a bunch of images pretty much from the same perspective using my roller cord. Um, so I'm going to get that developed tomorrow, so hopefully I can scan it in and maybe have that for next week. But I thought that might be a good way to kind of see what the Analog Effects Pro does versus actually shooting it in analog. <laughs> so, you know, my... My tendency tends to be like, oh, if you're gonna, if you want analog effects, just get yourself a film camera and shoot film. But I mean, anyway, um, I, I completely agree. Although there are some some things like um, um, Polaroid transfers, mm -hmm. you just you just can't do it anymore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I mean, I, I I played around with it a little bit, and I'll talk about it a little bit after we're done. But I mean, I generally, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. But uh, let's let's dig into the uh, into the images and. Um, I posted a few. I know you posted a few. John posted a few, and um, uh, Christy posted one at least. So okay. let's see what she got. And there's your picture, Frank. I'm gonna go back to. The, I'm gonna go back to the group though. Get in here, um, and we'll kind of go through yeah, a few different images. I think we ended up with. Your 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 rock composite. No, we ended up with uh, I think it was this one I did last Friday. Yeah, I think this might have been it. Um, All I see is you, but you're not sharing. Okay, let me share. Hang on. Screen share. There we go. I think I figured this out after six months. All right. <laughs> there. Can you see that now, Frank? Yeah. Okay, so I think this is what we talked. This was the last image we we went over last week, which was my um, image of the uh, four hundred thousand dollar Ferrari that I saw at the car show um, with the uh, and I captured with the roller cord. And I think this was Acros one hundred film is what I used. Yeah, yeah. So um, great car. Only way I'll be able to have a picture of that on my wall is taking a picture of somebody else's, not my own. That's for sure. All right. Um, I was saying that I went to this mill last weekend and tried to get some last of the fall colors, um, and it was kind of crowded. We went late afternoon on Saturday, and um, this was an old uh, mill that was set up, I think, originally maybe like 1850, something like that. It was a cotton, a cotton mill, and it was the mill itself was destroyed by Sherman as he marched through Atlanta and burned burned everything down on his way to uh, uh, to the coast. And then they rebuilt it, and 
modernized it, and um, it ran off and on up through the 60s, I think. And then now it's just uh, it's just a local uh, park in the city of uh, Roswell. But this is the um, the falls. There's a, a small lake behind that where they used to generate um, uh, to get the water to run through the flume and to power the mill. But there are a lot of people out here. This was like four o'clock on a last Saturday, and um, I couldn't get where I originally wanted to take the photo, uh, so I just had to kind of find a rock uh, on the edge, and I wanted to capture some of the colors back here, but I didn't want to get all of this. But that was just where I could where I could end up. So this is a um, this is a bracketed shot, three images. Uh, done in uh, HDR Effects Pro and Color Effects Pro. Okay. So I got uh, minus two, zero, and plus two merged uh, in there, and um, it came out. It came out pretty good. It, the, the the HDR definitely pulled out some of the color back here, um, and the the exposure was long enough to get a little bit of the little bit of the blurring in the waterfall. So. Um, I generally like it. The thing I don't like about it is I wish I didn't have all this over here. These trees are up close, but that was just more a matter of what was available for me to shoot that I could see at that at that particular point. There were a bunch of people out there uh, taking, I don't know, engagement photos. I mean, it just a, a lot of um, you know, family photographers or, or couples out there with... Uh, you know, wedding photographers or that type of thing, and there were literally people standing in line waiting to get up close to the river after me, <laughs> so, they could, so they could shoot you know portraits or whatever in front of the falls with the with the trees in the background. So, um, I uh, I ended up cropping it a little bit. This was I think it this was about 35 millimeters on my um, on my T3i on my DSLR. So I cropped it a little bit just to kind of get the rock to kind of fill in the corner because there was a, a leaf over here and type of thing. So I cropped it maybe, I don't know, 5 or 10% of the full image of the image size. So this is probably the equivalent of like a 50 millimeter <laughs> shot. But um, I'm pretty happy. I, I wish I would have been out here a week earlier because these leaves would have been here. They wouldn't have fallen off the trees. Uh, but I got some nice color in the background, and I captured the falls. I think this is a place I'll go back to a few right. times a year, different seasons. Maybe in the winter, if we get a really cold day, I'll go back and see if maybe I can get some ice on the on the on the water and that type of thing. Because it's only 15 minutes away from the house, and I never oh. knew this place existed. Um, let me see if I can find it. I'm gonna go yeah, back to my. If you had snow on some of these rocks, that would be uh, a really awesome. Yeah. It would, and the, the trick is here in Georgia, Frank, we don't get a lot of snow, but if we did, <laughs> it would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, we get snow a couple times a year, and if we do, it's generally, it, it falls overnight, and it's gone by 10 o'clock in the morning. So I would need to get out here on a snowy day. I need to get out here maybe right after sunrise and do that. So, yeah, so, uh, but I'm going to try to go back. I'm going back to my stream. Um, what inspired me to do this is a guy, a local uh, photographer that I met up with a couple of the local photo walks um, mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. His name is Travis, um, and here is his image that he captured generally of that same location from a little different perspective. But he did this back on, this might have been around the 25th of October, so this was maybe 10 days before. I took mine. Wow, things have really changed now. We yeah. have. I mean, this tree here in my image is completely bare. So all these trees here were were pretty much bare. The, these trees still had the same color, but he was farther back on the um, on the river, obviously. But uh, I saw this on it. You know, my, you know I, I've got a I've got a circle on Google Plus for Atlanta photographers. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, that's a really cool place. I never knew that existed. And um, I looked it up, and I said, I wonder if there's still any color. So we were, uh, I dragged my wife out there, you know, Saturday afternoon at 3. I'm like, we got to go out there. <laughs> so 
ended up pretty good, but he 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 does a really he's this is a really nice shot. I mean, he's got he's got blue sky and that type of thing. Um, for me, the sky was gray. I mean, there wasn't any color in the sky, so mm -hmm. I I didn't even bother trying to capture the sky because it was just gray and and there was nothing there was nothing to it. But uh, I mean, all these trees here in his image, they're all they've all got color on them. Yeah, you know, it's, it's such a huge difference between the two shots as far as um, the lines in the mm -hmm. image. Here, in this in this particular shot, yes, you do have the horizontal going through the center of the frame. Mm -hmm. but at the bottom, you have a lot of diagonals going this way, and on the top, you have that diagonal of the tree line. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a lot a lot more converging lines going this way, and uh, a lot more uh, uh, diagonals, which add uh, more dynamic. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd agree. I mean, his his image is a lot better than mine. Now, he he did actually wade out into the water to get this mm -hmm. one. You know, he's I like probably, the shutter speed too. He's probably fifteen or twenty feet out from the from the shore here, um, and I didn't I didn't do that. I was just standing on a rock. <laughs> so <laughs> a little different perspective, but it's interesting. Sure. I mean, I think this is just a neat um, you know a little bit of time difference. You know, the color. Um, and it just shows that if you have a place that you like to, to photograph or is unique, go mm -hmm. back because it's going to change all the time. Yes. You know, and I mean, thousands of people go here every weekend. And um, and I, I, I did a search on, on Flickr and, and on Google for, you know, Roswell Mill Falls, which is, you can search under that and you'll see a bunch of images. And... A lot of snapshots and in a few photographs. I like his is a real. This is a really nice photograph. Uh, mine is, I think, a an okay photograph, but it's a little bit different perspective. So it was kind of interesting. But I I lived here for seven years, and I, you know, I'm only 15 minutes away from Roswell proper, and I didn't even know about this place. So just goes to show, I guess. And we got a few images from John in um, Denmark. He calls this the old slammer. Um, I'm assuming it's a jail or a prison of some kind. Um, looks like some bars on the window. Um, yeah. Nice lines. I mean, I think the um, there's some neat texture in the brickwork here on the building. This looks like maybe this was shot middle of the day. I don't know. Uh, let's say, but 125th at f5.3 uh, ISO 400. So, and I think he uses, yeah, he uses, he has a Nikon D70. So, oh, discard that. So he, uh, but. Uh, the um, the iron this would be I think would be a neat if you could get up close and do a detail of the um, of the iron of the iron bars because it looks like there's some neat there's some rust and corrosion and stuff in here that would be that would be kind of interesting. The lights just seems very uh, soft here. You think maybe I mean, maybe like an overcast day or a partly cloudy day. Mm-hmm. And depending on how the angle of the sun is, you can start to rake off the, the, the surface of those bricks and really start to bring up the texture. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a fair amount of texture in here. It looks... Uh, <coughs> Even more so. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think for me, it'd be neat to get a, almost a macro of this area right here. I think that would be really neat because it, it just looks like there's a lot, of, a lot of neat stuff there. And depending on the light, like you said, you could... Get that with uh, with the light coming in from one in, from one end to the other. Are we back? There we are. There you are. I <laughs> lost you there for a second. We had a temporary Google Google initiated. Uh, Thing here, I'll go and start the screen share again. Um, but yeah, I was saying before uh, before Google cut us off that the uh, it'd be neat to get a, a close up of here 
Um, I think there's just a lot of neat texture and stuff in the, in the iron around the window. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like the I like the colors. I mean, it's a neat uh, neat comp uh, thing. Maybe if we crop, I don't know. For me, crop that down a little bit more. So maybe that wasn't there, and it was maybe just more in the window and in the the texture on the uh, on the brick there. But uh, kind of cool. Yeah, it's a nice contrast with the circular and then mm -hmm. the straight lines. Now, here it is. Uh, he calls it a creative blacksmith work. Uh, that's nice. That kind of a detail shot. I'm assuming maybe that's like a handle or something on a window. Uh, 200 millimeter F13. And John has done... John does some interesting macro shots. You've seen some of his where he's done uh, bees and insects and that type of thing. So I know he's he's kind of into into macro. That probably isn't really macro, but it's a neat um, a neat treatment of the image. He's got it. He's got the lines kind of going diagonal this way. I mean, you know, the regular way would be oh that's kind of cool and just shoot it straight on. Mm -hmm. So he's got kind of a unique angle. The um, the reflection in the glass here. Is nice. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. And once again, there's some there's some nice detail in the in the metal. Nice reflection uh, in there. And I don't know if he did any like any um, color modification to the image, but um, certainly looks converted to black and white. It does. Yeah, it looks like maybe a sepia tone or something something like that. But uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's it's neat. I mean, you see something that's interesting, and I think the general um, impression is is just take a, a shot of it straight on, and you kind of went off to the side and, and angled it a little bit. At least in post, he did as far as angling it, and mm -hmm. that, that makes it a little more um, a little more creative. Right. He he probably did shoot straight on, but you know if mm -hmm. you're if you're working an image, you're going to shoot more than just one different angle. Yeah, exactly. Um, CPH Uni, whatever that is, uh, <laughs> it's probably okay. One eight hundred F one point eight at ISO eight hundred. Interesting setter. Um, what was that? What was that explosion? It was a one eight hundredth at F one point eight ISO eight hundred. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry. That's an interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, combination. He's it got might a 35 be one of those things where he had the ISO set and was on auto. I don't know. And it and it just did it. But um, I don't know. You got the mix of light here. It looks like light coming through the through a window. So it's obviously an interior shot. Mm -hmm. um, the light coming in here. Um, you know, more on more on the wall, not necessarily on the statue here. That is the uh, the focus of the image. But that's a neat that's a neat tapestry mm -hmm. coming down on the side there. Um, nice colors. It's uh, that's an old building. That, that building's probably 500 years old. Who knows? <laughs> Be interesting as uh, you can see the light coming through the uh, windows behind the camera. Uh, how that would change over the period of a day. Mm -hmm. Does the light actually strike the statue? Yeah, I mean, would the light move across, um, you know, move across the face of the statue? And that would be interesting to have the have the light coming across right here. Right. Kind of get right. that and then do that in black and white. Yeah, black and white might work well, very well as well, uh, very well too. Uh, the thing here that kind of bugs me is that bright highlight behind the hand of the statue. Right here, yeah. Yeah, that just that's very distracting. Kind of draws it, away. That's the brightest, brightest point of the entire frame. Yeah, right, right behind the hand there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, this this is not bad. I mean, this is highlighted, but it's not super bright. But yeah, it's almost like there's a little little spotlight shining right there. Um, but, I mean, I think he was main, the main focus was on this, but yeah, this does tend to draw your eye away from from this area. And but I do like the composition, the lines, uh, mm -hmm. the way he placed the statue on the third, and um, mm -hmm. yep, yeah, that. 
in there. Do you use? Um, I was playing around in Lightroom and I noticed uh, you know they've got the was it the golden ratio one of the one of the uh, overlays in there. Right. You ever right. tried to compose images using the golden ratio as opposed to thirds? I have that as a uh, default. Mm -hmm. My my default is not the rule of thirds. My default is uh, the, the the golden mean. Yeah, and that's. I've been using that for about the last week or so, and I think I like it a little better. <laughs> There's um, a couple of videos that I've seen about this on um, on YouTube. You could, you could easily just Google it or, or search mm -hmm. it on YouTube. Uh, one of the things about uh, composition that I uh, one of the sites was Adam Morelli. He has a he has a great great site that goes into uh, compositional theory as well. Okay. All right. No, I'll check that out. That might be worthwhile because that's now that I'm I'm, I'm I'm I think I'm at the point where I feel pretty good about the exposure choices that I'm making. Now I really need to to to, to try to adjust and maybe tweak the composition a little bit. And right. what's interesting is working with the roller cord, it's a square format. You go to you know, the DSLR 35 millimeter. It's a, it's more of a rectangular format. So it, you have to think differently when you do that. You do, definitely. But yeah, using the golden mean, I think, is um, probably a better way than going than using the rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is is loosely based on the golden mean. Mm -hmm. So the mean came first, and then the rule of thirds. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's a little tricky to get used to it and and kind of see it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's definitely worthwhile uh, learning it and uh, working with it. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna keep that as the uh, as the default um, screen over the uh, the crop tool in Lightroom, and then just kind of go through some of my other images and see how it how it lays out. I mean, just kind of experiment a little bit. Um, all right, let me go back here. So, go back in here. Um, now here's one from Christy, and I'm assuming this is a composition <laughs> of multiple images. <laughs> I would think that um, maybe at least three images, maybe four. What's your guess, Frank? Well, you've got the uh, cemetery of one. The woman is two. Uh, not sure about the boats. Uh, that could be three. The lightning bolt could be four, and the sky could be five. Yeah, I, mean, I I think I commented a couple days ago. Um, I thought I did it. Um, I said, "Is that a is that a, a composition of at least three images?" I thought. I figured, you know, maybe, you know, the lightning, the background was one, the uh, the boats in the cemetery were two, and then superimposing the the uh, the woman on the uh, on the headstone was the third. But um, I don't know if this is. Film or not? No, it says okay. Yeah, yes. So it's probably just a uh, little photoshopping <coughs> layers and adding stuff together. But it's very creative. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's got the it's the beginning of something that uh, that could be really cool. Uh, really wish that I got the bottom of those um, front. Yeah, these headstones though. Yeah, yeah. They're, kind of, they're just kind of cut off a little bit. Yeah. Right, because by doing that, what happened here is that you end up with uh, middle ground, and then you have background, but you really don't have foreground. The middle ground yeah, is you really just goes right to the middle. Yeah. You go right to the middle. If you shot with a little bit more ground, then you have some space where you can lead in. That's that would be interesting. Yeah, kind of uh, flip through to her and then back over to the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, then you got something behind the woman's head. A house. Oh, the boat. Yeah, it looks like a half boat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd probably Photoshop that out. Yeah, yeah. Or, or move it if point. you want yeah, that I, element. I, if you I didn't notice that until you mentioned it, but yeah, it does. You look at it, and it it's a it's a boat, but you look at it from a distance, like, hey, that's a pretty cool half. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a, super creative. This is, I think, hundred so. times more creative than I could ever be with three images, three or four or five images. That's for sure. Yeah. And um, Christy is. Christy is doing does a really good job. I mean, she's she had posted some of those salt um, uh, salt prints last week and yeah, I like those a lot. 
and she's uh, very very creative and I, I really I really look forward to seeing seeing the images she posts because it's uh, um, it's always uh, it's always interesting she does a really good job but yeah I mean I'm sure she'll probably she'll probably take this and, and tweak it some more uh, I would definitely yeah Eat the, it's nice a, light too on those headstones. The, mm -hmm. the color of the light is really nice. I mean, yeah, the headstones are. It's a neat image, but yeah, like you said, that and the lightning is cool. I mean, I've I've tried to photograph lightning and I've been completely unsuccessful. And uh, it's just a matter of luck and uh, preparation, I think. <laughs> to get... And when you don't have either one, you can just Photoshop it in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. Here's my attempt at abstract photography. Um, this is um, this was shot with my uh, Canon PowerShot S100. We were at the Stone Mountain Lake. It was that two weeks ago, I guess it was. Uh -huh. And um, I posted a couple images last week from there. But this was one where I just zoomed in on the water, and um, and then just tried to frame it as well as I could, and then just uh, took the shot at that point. So. You know, the, the color in there, uh, you know, it's just a lot of ripples in the water, and um, it kind of, it, I think it came out okay. I, I think it was a little, you can see the tree flowing through the image. Mm -hmm. um, there's some pine needles here, um, various colors. Um, it was just one of those, um, this is actually the first time I tried something like this, so I, I didn't... Uh, I didn't know what to expect, and it was with a little point and shoot. But that's a good little camera. I really like that S100. It doesn't. Yeah, matter. this this type of composition, you know, you've got the the vertical lines of the, of the tree trunks. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that that initially says shoot vertically. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow the the leaves, the color of the of the reds and the, uh, the amber colors, mm -hmm. they, they tend to almost look like they're going horizontally at an almost horizontal at an angle. So you, this might actually work both ways. Yeah, as a as a horizontal and a vertical, but yeah. that the top area where your cursor is now, it's mm -hmm. I, I think is a bit high. I'd bring that down a little bit. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too. As I was looking at it, that is a little a little bright. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of is a lot different than the rest of the image, which was a little more toned down. Mm -hmm. But and what uh, was your shutter speed on this? Uh, I don't know. I think it was. Let's see. Do the magic of flicker, and will tell me that it was. Uh, it was a, a relatively early in the morning. Well, yeah, a thirteenth of a second. I went with a little longer shutter speed to try to get a little bit of blurring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, twenty-six Look. millimeters, which on the S one hundred is fully zoomed out. So it's the equivalent of probably like a hundred and five. I think twenty-six millimeters is the equivalent to one hundred and five millimeters. Wow. Yeah. Your depth of field is like infinite. Yeah. On that camera. Yeah. All, exactly. all the time. At that point, yeah, it's you know it's a little a small little point and shoot sensor, um, yeah. But I shoot it, I shoot everything in raw in the in this camera, and um, in the S95, which which I really enjoyed, but I left at the rental house in North Carolina a few months ago. <laughs> it was an expensive, more expensive trip than I thought, but um, but yeah, the S100 I generally like. It, the bat, the one thing I don't like about it is the battery life isn't near as good as the S95. Um, it's, <laughs> if I'm I'm going out for more than a few shots, I need to take both batteries. It seems like, whereas the S95, the battery life was a lot longer. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the battery life on my uh, 645. Um, mm -hmm. Four or five hundred shots. Go yeah. off, you know, shoot. That's that's easily a day's worth of shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so this well. is if I if I don't do any video, it seems to just suck. Uh, battery life out of out of this camera more so the the S95 too but more more so in this camera so if I don't yeah. do much if I don't do any video I can get yeah I can get a few hundred shots um, you can you can lengthen that time frame or the the life if you lower the amount of uh, if you lower the duration of your um, uh, image preview on the LCD screen when you take oh, a picture yep. yeah if you knock it down to a second or two mm -hmm. I, you know I being from a film background where I never had that ability to, to, to chimp, yeah, I, I rarely look at the back of my camera. Yeah. Hardly yeah. ever. Well, yeah. that and it takes about 15 seconds for it to 
pop up on the screen anyways because it's such a, uh, a huge file and not a very fast camera in the first mm -hmm. place. Yeah. But I, I, I find myself just not doing that. You're probably right. The more, the more film I shoot, because I can't, I can't chimp when I'm shooting film, so the more film I shoot, <laughs> I think I'm probably less likely to, to look at, try to review every image as soon as I take it on the digital now because I'm just... When I'm shooting film, it's like it doesn't matter. I can't I can't look at it till it gets developed, and whether right. it's good or bad, it, it is what it is. Right. So you would think actually you would need the chimp less on a digital because you can just take a bunch of shots anyway. So why even look at it? <laughs> you know, if you have any if you have any doubt at all in your mind, just take another shot. Doesn't for me, I, I I chip mainly for depth of field. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And that's predominantly it. I mean, I know my I know my I can see my my uh, composition in the viewfinder. I don't need to pop up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just to see if you got the the depth of field is what is what you want in the final. Yeah, that in focus and um, you know, did I get any blur because my shutter speed's a little on the on the low side and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> how big is the uh, how big is the uh, is the screen on your six forty five? Yeah, about three inches. Three inches. About okay. like, about right. like that. That's a little okay. So it's a Big little enough. bigger than a DSLR, maybe another half an inch or an inch bigger. Because I think the screen on the D on on the back of my T3i is, it's maybe two and a quarter inches, maybe okay. two and a half. It's like it's like a a 120 negative. It's like a yeah, it's about the size of that. That's uh, nice. You get, there's a lot of times I looked at that and go, wow, that's a good shot. And you get back and you look at it on the screen, it's like, ah, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> you still can't. It's still not big enough really to. To give a real critical uh, analysis of of uh, you know, like focus or that type of thing, right? You can you can get close. I think you can probably get eighty percent of the way there by by looking at the screen. But I think you're right. Yeah, the more film I shoot, the less I I chimp on my digital. Right. Yeah, that's probably a probably a good probably a good thing actually because it forces me to think a little bit more about what I do before I push the shutter button. <laughs> Now this is MoMA door. Is this a food truck or a shot of something through a door? This is the door to the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Oh, okay. MoMA. It's, All right. It's a um, very highly, I guess it's an aluminum door. Mm -hmm. And um, so what you're saying is a man just standing on the side of the street and a uh, uh, city bus or a Muni bus uh, drove by. Okay. So is this the window in the door here? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, it's been a while. It may, it may be a window, or it just it's just another reflective uh, panel. Okay. Yeah, I don't but all of this door. here is the aluminum on the door itself. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So they do a good job of keeping that clean and polished, so it gives nice reflections. Apparently so. That's cool. All right. I saw MoMA, and I'm like, what the heck is MoMA? But now I know. <laughs> And this is with your, uh, yeah, this is with the, uh, with the Pentax, right? No. No? No, this is a Canon EOS 1. Okay. Uh, 7200. Uh, no, no, maybe I didn't shoot this with a 7200. It may have been uh, with a 20 to 35. I had, a, I once had a 20 to 35 L, which okay. was a nice little lens. Yeah. Shot on, this was shot on Velvia. Okay. That's neat. It's what what's interesting about it is the the door frame itself really really distorts, and you got this guy here. He's kind of he's distorted pretty good, but then his the, his uh, shoulders and head are pretty much normal looking in here. Mm -hmm. Right, at, he's right, right at that break. So that's a uh, how many shots of this door did you take? Mm, I think maybe two, two or three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe two or three. Yeah, but this is it's got some nice color in here, um, and it's interesting how, it, um, yeah, the distortion of the bus going by in the middle here, it's pretty clear. Out here, it kind of gets abstract a little bit. And what is this green? Any idea it's, what that is? That that is just a tree. Okay. That's that's getting distorted. It has a bit of a swirl effect. Okay. Like a, All right. Yeah, a tree. Like a radial blur or something. All right. Cool. But uh, one of the things I liked about this is that as the bus came by, you had this white advertisement on the side mm -hmm. that really set off his silhouette. Yeah, it did. Had that, yeah. Been a, 
You're right. exactly right. You got this nice bright white background, right? And he created a nice, uh, a, a great shadow of his uh, of his head and shoulders. And that's one of the things I, I always look for when I'm doing people shots. If I can move one way or the other and juxtapose um, a um, a background behind the person's head, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's let's say they're very dark and, and I want a bright background, or if their their face is fully lit, I want a darker background, and it just brings their uh, it frames their head, it brings out their um, mm -hmm. it brings out the uh, that their their head more more. Makes yeah, it more yeah, you can element. definitely see you can almost see his eyelashes here. I mean, it's just a really really well defined um, head. Yeah, and that's that's a great tip. I mean, I didn't really. Think about it that way, but now that you explain it, that does make uh, that does make sense. Yeah, it's, 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 that's a neat that's a neat abstract shot. I like it. Very nice. Thanks. And here's talk about juxtaposition of lines. Um, I saw this Treasure Island admin building. I was on Treasure well, other than driving over it on multiple times on the Bay Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually in Treasure Island in maybe June of 1989 when I worked for an, a retail inventory service way back in the old days where we go in and actually take inventories and we did the we did the commissary on Treasure Island. Oh, okay. I saw this and I was like, that immediately for whatever it probably just Treasure Island. I saw this like, hey, I was there in 1989. <laughs> but I didn't yeah, take I, I didn't take an image of the building like you did. This is. This is neat. I had originally shot this on film. Okay. Back yeah, back in the uh, in the late '90s. So when I got my digital, uh, I went back and I, I, I reshot this. And I'd, I'd probably do it again a little differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I I would change. I would move it over maybe a little bit more to the I'd move the camera over to the left a little bit. So you have that diagonal line that comes down, but it doesn't go into the corner of the frame. Yeah, it drops off about yeah about ninety percent of the way there. Right, I'd, I'd put it more in the corner, mm -hmm. and see if I could work it that way. Oh yeah, you could. Uh, that's just by changing the perspective of the camera a little bit. You could have got that yeah. right to cross right. that corner there. Um, but yeah, I mean that was the one thing. It'd be oh, it'd be cool to kind of see that come in there, and you got a little bit of the. You're pretty close to this building. I don't know. You yeah, little, I was. You get a little bit of curvature here. It looks like in this in this front one. In this front section. Uh, if I remember correctly, because it is curved, it's not. It, okay. It's not, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a it's a curved front. All right. Yeah. It's a it's a it's an Art Deco building, and there there's there's some curves to it. Okay. But yeah, I mean that's a that's a great. It almost looks like something you'd find in Santa Fe or something. Doesn't it? Yeah, because that that color, especially against the deep blue background, mm -hmm. yeah, that's like something you would see in the Southwest. I mean, this building was actually in the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, it was? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. For a few seconds. I think they used it like in an establishing shot. Okay. All right. But yeah, it's there. Huh. So you're not going to have to go watch the movie again to find out. Yes, I am. I'm going to have to watch it. <laughs> but what's cool about this is, I mean, there's just lines everywhere. I mean, you got you know, the vertical, the horizontal, um, these... Um, I don't know, whatever you call them, going through here. I mean, it's a, and the co the colors are nice, just a, a nice contrast of colors. But yeah, the the thing that, that caught my eye was great colors, but then wow, it'd been a, nice to have that go right in the corner there. But uh, you live close, you can go by there and take that again, I'm sure. Easy. Yeah, yeah, very cool. That's a neat. Um, there is, um, oh, where is it? Um, I'm gonna go back and show you one of my other. Atlanta photography guys and it, and he does it he does a lot of um, he, he does four by five he does some large format photography but he did a shot where is it uh, it's got John Mason architecture shots it's a building in there it is architecture series that your image reminded me of where did he post it oh this one right here yeah. Kind of similar, you know, the, the vertical, and he did it in black and white. And I don't know if this was, um, I think this was just with his uh, DSLR. 
but yeah, I saw I saw your image. And I was like, oh, that kind of reminds me of John's shot. So yeah, uh, I can see that. Uh, yeah, kind of similar types of lines. I but, like I like how he has a lot of negative space on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, All this really up here. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my uh, one of my early favorite photographers was uh, Brett Weston. And uh, if you don't know Brett Weston, do yourself a favor and look at his images. It's it's pretty amazing. He's fathered Edward Weston, one of the most influential photographers of the mm -hmm. 20th century. Um, he uses Brett uses uh, or he had used uh, when he was taking photos. He died in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, he he had so much negative space and he used it so well. It was such a powerful element in his images. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I think actually John lists Weston as one of his influences, <laughs> which doesn't surprise me. But here's another one that John took. I'm, um, this was um, a falls near Amicalola Falls, which is in the north, in the mountains of North Georgia. That's nice. But he shot this with his um, his four x five camera, and developed it himself, and I think scanned it, wet process on the scanner. So yeah, just kind of a neat. Um, thing. But yeah, John's John's a good guy, a good photographer. But yeah, yeah I saw your building. I was like, yeah, that reminds me of John's shot. So kind of cool. Um, and here's another one. See now, now okay, now you got it going right in the corner here. Oh, good job. <laughs> this is Sutro Rock at sunset. Talk about some vivid colors. This is this is an HDR. Yeah. Okay. This is actually my first HDR ever. First ever? Wow. First, first ever. Shot with a 645, so, okay. I, I, I knew I wanted to go out to Sutro Towers. I had no idea what Earth, not Sutro Towers, but the Sutro Baths. Um, I didn't know what I was going to find there. So I, I came in, and right about this time, I got maybe about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. and then about 10 minutes before I shot this, uh, this photo here. And uh, walked around, and I saw this wonderful leading line right into the rocks. And uh, mm -hmm. um, the um, the DNG or the raw image looks nothing like this. Absolutely nothing. It's it's flat. It's muted. Uh, it doesn't have this wonderful light. Like this, this the, the greenery and the side of that rock looks almost mm -hmm. as if I had lights coming down onto it. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like almost like a studio shot, which. Yeah, I'm I mean, like, okay, hold, okay, guy, hold the light right here and hold one here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it looks completely different. And uh, that's one of the things I like about HDR, at least from how, how I've been able to play with it. It gives it that almost uh, biblical kind of lighting, mm -hmm. uh, this godlike lighting that you just don't get, maybe not necessarily naturally, but... Um, yeah. No, I I mean that's, that's one of the things I I like about HDR for for landscape is um you know you, you bracket it you you get a good scene and you can you can get things to come out without it being uh cartoonish. And right. this is this is definitely not cartoonish, it's just nice vivid uh vivid colors. Um was this uh, three brackets? Yes. Three shots, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's just like your uh, your uh, waterfall shot. Had mm -hmm. you not told me it was HDR, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, yeah, and that's for most of my HDR, I try to make it as natural as I can. I mean, that's uh, and it can be a challenge sometimes because it's great to move those sliders and <laughs> see what happens. But uh, yeah, you kind of get it to the point where you like it, and I I found I kind of get it to the point where that looks great, and then I back it off a little bit, and that ends up usually being where it should be. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this what what caught me about this was the first thing it caught me was was the line of the wall going through, and then the greens here, right, and then uh, just you know the the oranges and reds in the cloud. The one thing that is a little distracting is this stuff back here. But I don't know if that's something that you could compose, you know, get get this with without getting that. I mean, you know, it doesn't look. No, like I completely it. agree, and. Uh, yeah, that, if I had to fault it for anything, it would be that left corner. Yeah, but I mean that, that's one of those things. Is like, okay, well, this is much more powerful than that. This is just, it's a little, not so much this building, but this stuff back here looks like docks or something. But 
Um, it's a restaurant area. It's, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, sure you, you'd have to be hanging out on a on a uh, scaffolding or something out over here in order to to get it a different way, probably. <laughs> if I if I had just lowered the tripod a foot. Oh, okay. That would have, that would have changed my perspective, and those and those uh, yeah. lights would have fallen behind the, the yeah. The, the these wall. these lights here would have dropped down below, and mm -hmm. you would have only got maybe this top section of the of the building. Right. But yeah, I mean that's that's a great shot. The colors the colors are what make this the line the line of the wall and then the colors, and it just kind of draws you right into the right into this, and then this is kind of just kind of there for for bonus. For bonus points, so yeah, yeah very nice. And here's my um, not really artistic shot, but um, fun with my fun with fisheye shot. Uh, <laughs> this is a 1967-68 Mini Cooper, which is already like incredibly tiny anyway. And um, I was at the car show, and I had my my uh, my Rokinon eight millimeter fisheye, so. I um I just took a took a shot of it with that, but um, it's my fun with, fun with fish island shot there. Um, but yeah, super super colorful car. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know mini minis are it's amazing that people can actually fit in these things. But you know they're you know, little teeny tiny tires. I mean they're not much bigger than a bike. I mean it doesn't seem. Like you can really fit two people, but you can fit. I mean, you look in there, and you could fit two people in there. And, it's basically uh, a phone booth with wheels. Yeah, it's, that's pretty much it. But uh, <laughs> they're they're so small. And when we lived in Colorado, a uh, um, lady who I worked with, her husband restored these. That was his that was his hobby. You know, he'd restore a couple of them a year, buy them, restore them, uh, keep the one he likes, sell the other one, and then just kind of rotate rotate through. But he'd always be driving around in these little things, and he was a fairly big guy, so it was kind of, yeah, it was like right out of a, a comic book or something. But uh, yeah, cool. So um, it's I've I've got the um, um, I, I contribute a photo. I try to contribute a photo every week to the um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Four Wheel Friday on Google Plus. There's a group that does um, every Friday. They do um, it's, a, it's a it's a theme photo theme for for cars or whatever. So I've been I've been trying to post at least something for that every week. And I've, I've, I'm going on three or four months at this point because I do have a lot of car shots. So I just try to I try to post uh, I try to post stuff uh, that are, that are this, uh, transportation related at least um, once a uh, once a week. So, um, any um, I guess we kind of go into the into the link share. Um, I've I've got a couple interesting, well, one really interesting one for me, um, which is something I've struggled with, mm -hmm. and this was this was kind of a, a neat um, a neat thing on it uh, that was posted by a lady. Um, that's in a, a street photography group here in Atlanta that I belong to. Uh, but just an article on how to photograph strangers. So it talks about different techniques and how to approach it. And um, I know for me, it has been a um, uh, that's a big challenge for me. Is you know, it's it's easy to be anonymous and take a um, you know just take a po you know, photo of the inanimate landscape or whatever. But when it when it comes to uh, um, doing, uh, you know, taking taking pictures of, of individuals, that's 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 always been a challenge for me. So um, that was kind of an interesting. There we go. Get back to it. Uh, a neat link to an article that talks about you know how to approach it and you know just some general street general street photography techniques. I think so. I just uh, put in the chat a. Uh a link to Adam Morelli's uh, site. Oh, okay. Uh, he goes into detail uh, about composition. Um, he's got several different articles on uh, traditional uh, composition used by the masters of painting, for example. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can get a pretty good in-depth uh, idea of what's going on there. 
Okay, good. Try, try that. Try to incorporate that into your compositions. Yeah, I will. I'm going to go ahead and copy this link. And He's also done at least two different uh, lectures on the B and H uh, website. Oh. They have. Uh, I don't know if you ever looked at the event space that they have there. Every once in a while, yeah. Yeah, his uh, both of them were excellent. Okay. Excellent. He, uh, he shoots with the Leica. All right. Like a Leica knight. Mm hmm. Hmm. I have not. I've not. Uh, I'm not aware of this guy, but uh, now I will uh, dig into it a little bit. Uh, how did you come across his uh, his site? Just from the B and H site? Right, exactly. I, I was watching the art, uh, the videos on B and H. Uh, I I don't. I tend to skip the uh, the equipment stuff and go straight to the uh, how to stuff, uh, mm -hmm. the inspirational things, uh, okay. things that I can learn from. Uh, I already have my gear, so I don't need to know about anything else yeah. gear-wise. <laughs> you don't need to spend any more money on gear. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, so, yeah, he, I saw his uh, latest lecture, uh, and I just was really fascinated by it, so I Googled him, and bam, there he is. Okay, cool. So what's his um, what's his background? Is he, he just does a little bit... A little bit of everything, or I believe he's he's got a background in fine art. Um, I'm not okay. sure if he was a painter or a sculptor. Or, okay. Um, but and then he migrated into photography from there. Okay. Cool. I will uh, dig into that, and I'll add that to the uh, I'll add that to the links on the, on my blog post on that because it's there are so many so many great photographers out there, and mm -hmm. um, it's you could you could literally spend 24 uh, hours a day, seven days a week, um, <laughs> reading and and looking at um, you know blogs and uh, mm -hmm. things on, on from all good photographers, not just from sure. uh, you know uh, a bunch of hacks. I mean, actual you know actual photographers. So <laughs> right, and uh, you know the thing you want to do is if you're starting out. You ought to have a good library of, of books. Mm -hmm. Go go out to your local bookstore and buy some books and bring them home. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've got a bookcase here full of books that I that I've collected uh, over the years. Uh, but uh, I watched a video uh, from Kelby Media Training. Uh, they have a they have a, a monthly thing called the Grid. Okay. And uh, they 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 had one show talking about your visual library and how important that is. Mm hmm. Meaning, if if you're a, if you're trying to write a book, for example, and you've never read Shakespeare, mm -hmm. or if you've never read the greats, you don't have anything to be inspired by. You don't have anything to to learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, so, just like photography, if you, if you want to do great landscape work, you've got to take a look at the great landscape photographers, past yep. and and present. Yep. Uh, so. I agree. Yeah, and that's something that I've started. Um, Looking at a little bit is finding some books that I would would like to get. I've gotten um, uh, I'm adding them to my uh, to my wish list on uh, Amazon. I was like, okay, well the holidays are coming up. Uh, go ahead and get me one of those books because <laughs> yeah. I've got a bunch on there now. You know, and, uh, and especially this time of year when you're not when you can't get out and shoot as much as you as you can during the spring or summer. You know, when it gets dark early and that type of thing. It's uh, it's a great way to, to, to spend some time in the evening, uh, just kind of going through and, and, and taking a look at stuff. Um, now, on the as far as websites, the you know you have Flickr, and there's so much garbage. I'm sorry, but there's there is really so much garbage on Flickr mm -hmm. um, that there's just a lot of noise, uh, and it's kind of hard to find the really good stuff. So I tend to not to go to Flickr, but I go to uh, two sites. One is called 500px. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and uh, the other one is One X. Yes. Okay. Both of those tend to have uh, a much higher degree, almost completely of uh, filled of nothing but really good images. So if you're yep. going to go to some place, you want to know what's been shot in that particular uh, area. Do a search on 500px or One X.com, and you can get you get inspired. Mm hmm. No, I I agree. I I. My time is is fairly limited as it is. I, I spend a little bit of time on Flickr every day, just kind of you know looking through it because I do follow a you know a number of photographers, so I, I try to check on that every couple of days. Um, 
but yeah, 500 PX is is a great site. I mean, there's just a lot of very good, uh, uh, very good stuff on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I've gotten, uh, I've posted, I don't know how many have I done, 10 or 15, and on there. But I only post stuff on 500 PX that I get a lot of positive feedback other places. <laughs> because if I'm getting good feedback there, and I take a look at it again, it's like, yeah, that's probably good enough to post on 500 PX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but you just don't want to post. Flickr is where you post up a lot of pictures that, you know, good pictures, but not necessarily your best, I think. Yeah, if you want to show off your portfolio, you go to 500px. You want to put photos of your vacation or your or pictures of your cat, you go to Flickr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. And uh, although although I think there are a lot of really good photographers on on Flickr, but it it takes a lot longer to to find them. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree. Yeah, I, I don't There's want to just miss really Flickr. Fantastic photographers there, but how do you you, you dig through? Um, right. And 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 it you know it's I I've stumbled on a few just by uh, happenstance or people post a comment. I, I typically will take a look at people who post comments on my on my pictures on Flickr to see what their what their stream is like, and then if I like it, I follow them. Yeah, I do that too. Uh, also, to get an idea of you know when someone says they like it or someone says they hate it, I want to get an idea of okay, what what's your background? Mm-hmm. So when I see them shooting with something that's like a pocket camera, and all I got is pictures of their cats, yeah, I'll, I won't put very much credence into their their comment, positive or negative. Mm -hmm. But if they're if they have some stunning work on their on their um, mm -hmm. on their Flickr stream, uh, yeah, then obviously they're going to be yeah. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of the same process. I mean, there's there's so many people on Flickr, um, right. which is great. I mean, it's a good way to get uh, get your photographs noticed, but it's a good thing and a bad thing. There's just so much out there that um, you know, and I there's only so much time in a day, so I try to you know take a look at the ones that are, are commenting, and maybe if they've commented on a couple of images that I think are good images of mine, because I post a lot of stuff on Flickr that is okay, but there's also images on there that I'm like, yeah, it's just kind of fun to post, like the car picture. I mean, you know, a fisheye picture, you know, shot of a of a Mini Cooper is not. A photograph. That's more of a snapshot. It's slightly creative, but it, it's nothing great. But yeah, it's a fun shot. But right. Um, but I, I do post some of my other shots on Flickr too, and the, and the people that respond to that and comment on that, I tend to um, take a look and see what they're what they're posting. You know, what their photo streams are like, and then and then kind of use that. And then also a lot of times you can go on their profile and see if they if they post on 500 px too. Right. And if they do that, then I'll go over to 500px and, and take a look at what they're doing there too. So yeah, 500px. Another thing I use with 500px, if I want to see what a, uh, a piece of equipment can do, like let's say I want to see what the uh, the, the D4 can do, or mm -hmm. I want to see what the images of a Leica are like, mm -hmm. you, can, you can do a search for the camera itself, a Leica yep. M whatever, and you get a bunch of hits, and you can see okay, that's pretty impressive stuff, or boy, that seems like a waste of money, or yeah, basically, basically form your opinion. Yeah, and I kind, I kind of did that when, when I was looking at my, uh, getting my roller cord last year, I did a, I did a search on a 500 px for roller cord shots. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, if I get, if I know what I'm, if I pay attention to what I'm doing, I can get some really good shots with this camera, and I have. Yes, I have. Yes. You know, that was, that was one of the things that, that prompted me to, to, to go ahead and get that camera over, over some other ones out there because I saw some nice shots and. Some of the same film that I was thinking of using and that type of mm -hmm. thing. It's, a, it's just a good resource. So um, the other one, the other link I came across, um, and this is just kind of I think more of a general thing, is for people that are have all, all they've shot is digital and they've never thought about shooting film. Mm -hmm. Just an article on Petapixel about um, you know how to start shooting film as a digital photographer, and um, you know it's got, it's got some real basic stuff, but um, I mean I, I think it's a good entree you know for people that are have a digital camera and are getting into photography and are 
interested in actually taking photographs with film cameras, not just snapshots. And, right. uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a, a huge advocate. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm almost to the point where I think it's a requirement. If you consider yourself a photographer, you should at least do something in film if you've never shot film before. Because um, the benefits of, of analog photography over digital, not that one's better than the other, but that it takes a, it's a different process. And um, I think it's, it's just really, um, really valuable to be able to, uh, you know, to, to take, to have to slow down and especially using manual film cameras as opposed to you know fully automatic film cameras with motor drives right. um, you know, get, a, get a manual camera shoot in manual take the time compose the shot um, no chimping allowed and develop it and see what you get <laughs> because that it, it takes um, puts a whole other perspective on on photography it's not just a matter of going to a place that you like and then just taking a bunch of shots and pulling them up on your preview screen and deleting the ones you like and shooting some more. When you got a film camera and you got 24 shots per roll or 12 shots per roll and you can't look at the image until you develop it and every time you push the button it costs money, you're going to pay a lot more attention to what you do. And yeah, you know, digital is so simple. Uh, it, it's it, there's there's no stress with with digital. Mm -hmm. um, there's 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 no with with film. You really have to be on your game, mm -hmm. and you can be sloppy with digital because you just chimp and there it is. Oh, I need to redo it. So yep. you can just take it again. And I do, so, I, every time I shoot digital, I look at it for the most part, and it's like, oh, it's a bad shot. And it's only 15 seconds later, and I, so I can recompose the shot and take it again. You can't do that with film. No. Yeah. So you, yeah. You, you really have to take it more seriously. You just can't fool around with it. Mm -hmm. I heard a um, – um, I posted that link last week about the, the film photography podcast, the guy that kind of goes through and he's doing a, a, a thing on, on film photography. I heard a thing. Um, he was talking about the difference between – film and digital, he says, you know, back in the day, you'd go on a trip and somebody would, would put a 24 exposure roll of film in their camera and that would be what they would take for the trip, would be 24 exposures because they would only take the best shots, the stuff that interested them the most. He says, now somebody goes on a, a weekend trip and they take 600 shots. <laughs> what do you do with 600 shots? You Nothing. fill up a hard drive. Yeah, you fill up a hard drive, whereas you go out you, back in the, you know, when you had a film camera, you'd have your roll of film, and you'd, you'd see, take a shot at the 24 things that were the most impressive about wherever you were going. Right. And How I, many times have you had a roll of film of Easter and Christmas, both on the same, well, depending oh, on your religion? Yeah. A lot. Oh, Not so much role. me, but I'm, I know my, my father, you know, the, he would have a roll of film that would have, you know, would have Easter, it would have... Um, Birthdays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. It'd be a 36, a 36 yeah. exposure. There'd be a few shots of Easter. There'd be, um, you know, if we didn't take a trip that summer, um, exactly. you know, there'd be that. There'd be birthdays, <laughs> Thanksgiving, and Christmas all in one roll. So you'd have mm -hmm. six months of stuff, and they would actually be not necessarily uh, fine art photography shots, but they would be significant images. For the family, there would be significant documentary images exactly. for, for your Documenting life. Exactly. Documenting what happened for the family yes. over the over that course of time, not yes. 600 shots of the duck in the lake. Right. You know that, that you saw. So I mean, it's uh, so for anybody out there that's watching that wants to know what's up with film. If you, I'm I'm going to say right now, if you consider if you want to call yourself a photographer. You need to pick up a film camera and a manual film camera, shoot some film, and learn how to develop it yourself, black and white. And I think it's going to do nothing but improve your, your photography, and and make you a, a better photographer. Uh, even if you stop after that and all you shoot is digital, but my guess is you'll enjoy analog photography and you'll keep shooting it. Maybe not all the time, but it'll always be it'll become a part of your uh, of your photography. There's also the British Journal of Photography. 
I just posted the uh, mm. the, li the link. Okay. You see, you see, you're all full of links here, Frank. That's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably just send you an email. <laughs> with 500, 500 links. No, uh, it's not that many. It's like 30 or 40. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a really good for for the analog people out there, uh, the old school, um, the Art of Photography podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever uh, Ted Forbes. I have not run across that one. Yeah, definitely worth a look. Art Excellent. of Photography. Does he do? Is he a weekly or monthly or weekly? Weekly. Uh, okay. I think. Yeah, I, I don't remember what day of the week it is. Maybe Thursday or, or something like that. Okay. I think Thursday. All right. I'm going to write that down because uh, I am getting into listening to a podcast at, uh, as I work. <laughs> you know, on those, uh, on those days where I have a lot of, uh, you know, just kind of spreadsheet or stuff that I need, I need to be doing research and, and work, and I'm listening to uh, in the podcast is a great way to do it. Yeah, the art of the photography TV. Dot TV. Okay. I just posted it in the chat. Okay. Cool. That'll be good. Okay. Yeah, he talks. He, he's a film guy. He doesn't really get too much into digital, but you know, he talks about developing and uh, he talked about photographers. Uh, he, he works in a museum, uh, so he's pretty well learned. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. That's yeah. a very good thing. All right. Well, um, I think what we'll do is we'll postpone the, the, the conversation on Analog Effects Pro until next week because as we're sitting here talking, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the, um, the film that I'm going to get developed processed tomorrow and scanned in Sunday probably. I'm going to take that image. I'm going to compare it to the digital shot that I posted of the waterfall. I think I, I, think I got a film shot kind of in that same general thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see what I can do with the digital shot to make it look like the film shot using Analog Effects Pro. <laughs> so a lot of the things I saw on that on that uh, on those on those filters were the introducing of uh, uh, of effects when you screw things up with film. For mm -hmm. example, when you've got a light leak or you accidentally open up your film back or something, yep. uh, you can actually make it look like you. Uh, yeah, you can add errors to your pictures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I thought I spent about 15 minutes playing around with it a few days ago, and I was like, "Well, like one of the presets is to like add a light leak, and that's kind of interesting." <laughs> yeah, we spent we spent thousands on a camera just so we could make it look like. <laughs> yeah, you know, film. You spent yeah. five thousand dollars on a DSLR with a, with an F, you know 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens, and then we we take the image and we insert a, a digital light leak into it. Yeah, make it look like we like we screwed up with our film DSLR, you know, back in 19 you know, our film SLR back in 1970. <laughs> what's wrong with us? <laughs> yeah, but well, what's old is what's new again. I mean, that's 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 basically you're, it. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm gonna end this. Um, all right. I'm gonna end this here. Um, it's now 9.15 here Eastern Time. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, come back with some more images next week and my review of Analog Effects Pro with maybe some before and after shots of trying to take my digital image using that software or that plugin to make it look like the film shot that I took of the same thing. We'll see. That'll be cool. <laughs> All right. See you, Frank. Have a good week. Do the same. All right. Take care. Thanks for having me. You bet. See ya. Bye.